Hello and welcome back to my kids flight deck. After I've built my first sections of the overhead panel, it's time to install them into my new overhead frame. And how I've built this, I will show you in this episode. It has been a long time since I had my last steps here really in the cockpit so it's good to be back here and doing some hardware stuff inside this cockpit here. So I will orientate on the measurements of this dummy frame I have built some days ago and I have measured the space I have here it's about 65.5 centimeters here I don't have any more space at the right side here, but on the left side I can gain a little bit more space by sending down this uh, white painted MDF here. And I think I will reduce the spaces here to the eyebrow windows with this method. So now I have to prepare all the wooden parts for the frame and then go back to the computer and doing some drawing work. Because I have thought about a special fixing technique of these panel sections here, but you will see this later in the video. But even if I haven't planned all the panel sections in detail, I have to determine now some things and that are the positions of these fixing screws here. I have to know where every screw will be on the later finished overhead panel. When all the parts are prepared, the lower and upper overhead frames should look something like this. Before I glue this all together, I will have to drill all the holes for the panel sections. And I thought a bit about how I could fix all the panel sections to it. Because when I would screw a wood screw into this MDF, maybe I can do this once or two times, but not more. And then the MDF would be teared out. And so I came up with another idea. I will drill four millimeter holes from this side into the MDF and another 8 mm hole through the MDF which will hold a cross dowel. And so I can fix the panels with some M4 screws without having any wear out on the wood. But to drill these holes exactly I have built a cross dowel jig on my CNC. There are two 4 mm holes on the upper side and the 8 mm hole on the other side. So why I have machined two 4 mm holes here into this jig? So most of the times the two neighbored parts which hold always one panel section have the same screws in the horizontal direction. So I can clamp the two neighbored parts together mark the positions of every hole I need and then clamp the jig onto these two frame parts and drill the holes. And when I unclamp them again, I have the holes on both neighbored parts on the same height here. Now I have to glue and nail all these frame parts together. But there is one thing that I have to keep in mind. And this is the distance of all these dividers to each other. 
when they will come nearer or farther uh, from each other within one millimeter, then this failure would continue and maybe increase with every divider I'm adding here. And then the panels which will come out of the CNC later won't fit anymore on the hose here. And to get rid of this problem I have made these dummies here on my CNC which are spacers that have the correct width of the later coming panels. And these spacers I can screw onto the dividers here and then they will be hold within the correct distance to each other. And I only have to ensure that they are in the correct angle to these lower and upper frame pieces here. And another little problem has hit me now. Let me explain this to you. There are some points on these dividers where two of these bolts hit each other. And these bolts are a little bit too long for this 10 mm MDF and they will look out on the other side a little bit. But this little bit is enough so then when two of these meet each other the center hole of this nut isn't correct aligned to the hole on this upper side here. And so I will have to send down one of these nuts here so that it can get more into the hole and fit again. To nail the angled pieces together, I made some wooden supports on the CNC. The assembling of the after overhead was done like the lower one. I could even use the same acrylic spaces again. With the both frames nailed together, it's now time to connect the after and lower overhead frame together. And instead of making a long angled piece of wood, which would be difficult to make on the bandsaw or the table saw, I have decided to make those little angles here on my CNC. And these are made with an angle of 8 degrees, which will help me to hold the correct angle between the after and lower overhead frame. And I will bring these frames together, something like this. And I will try to drill four holes through these four blocks here and then screw them together with a screw and a nut 
so I can bring enough pressure here to hold the two frames in position. The two frame parts are clamped together and now I have to drill through the two parts on four different points to bring in the screws and a nut. But if I would screw them together as they are now, I wouldn't get the full pressure of a screw because these two sides are angled to each other because of this 8 degree angle. And to avoid this problem, I have made some other angles here which have an angle of 4 degrees each and when I glue them here on both sides then I have two sides which are parallel to each other and I can drill through these all, bring the screw in and have the full pressure on both sides. Do you know this problem? You have lots of screws in your shop but not the one you need? To connect these two pieces I thought I would use an 8mm screw, but I don't have this here. And I have this threaded rod here which has 8mm and I think I will cut away some pieces of it and with two nuts I will use this as a screw. While I connected these two frames together, I had the idea that I should paint the two frames first. And this is because of something I have mentioned earlier. This MDF tends to smell when it reacts with maybe some rest of liquids in the environment. And to prevent it from doing this, I painted the two parts with an MDF primer and I hope this will prevent the MDF from doing this. So let's get these two parts connected. Now I've removed the dummy frame and widened the opening. I have now lined up this frame temporarily here into my ceiling and now I have to decide where I want to drill the holes for the pivot point. There is already a hole in this frame where my previous overhead was installed but this hole is very deep here in the wood and when I would transfer this hole onto the frame then it would come out very low here in the frame and it could collide with the panels when they are installed. Instead of this I have made this access holder here and I can screw it onto the frame and then I can drill a hole in the upper side here of the frame and install a 10 mm rod and bring this through the frame and through the hole in here and this will make the new pivot point. But how can I transfer this point to the frame? Yes, my first idea was I take some green paint and tint the tip of the metal rod here green and push it through the hole and then I will transfer a colored point onto the frame. But then my wife came out with another idea and I have to say this now to you so she can be proud of it. Okay, 
and what will I do? I will place this holder here where it should be installed later and just transfer the outer line of this holder to the frame, disassemble the frame from the ceiling, lay this holder again onto it and then I can easily transfer the whole position onto the frame. I should have come out with this idea myself. One challenge solved, next one appeared. There is not enough space for this nut I want to use to um, tighten this metal rod to the frame. It collides with this wooden beam here. And so I will widen this beam a little bit at this point with a force method. To prevent the back end from falling down, I made two simple latches from a piece of multiplex where I can put a threaded rod through. And this I will screw onto the back end of this frame here. And when I want to fix the frame, I just push the threaded rod through and this will lay on the top of the wooden beam here and prevent the whole frame from getting down. And there it is again this moment when you scoot everything together and you come out with the idea how to assemble it more easier. So to remove the overhead frame from the ceiling, I have to remove this screw here. And to do this, I have to loosen these nuts and pull the screw out. But instead of doing this, I can cut away the upper part of this holder here and let this bottom part here in place. And then to install this overhead frame, I just have um, to carry it in here and let it slide down just to hit this bottom part here. Then it can't slide anymore down here. And I will still be able to loosen it on the upper side and rotate it down. So this will be an update I will do now on top. All these cross towels are in place now. After the painting they are sitting really tight in their hose, but to avoid any movement of them when I turn in the final screws, I will try to glue them tight there in their hose. And this is because I can't reach these screws anymore when the panels are in because the backlighting panel is in the way there and so I have to avoid 
any movement of them when I fix the panels later. I 3D printed some covers for the 4mm screws to let them look like the Deezer's fasteners. Now with the bonus panels in place, the fact that I can remove this frame easily from the cockpit and take it to my room and work on my computer while I'm connecting all the electronic stuff will come in really handy. You have noticed that I haven't drilled the holes here on the bottom part where the lights panels are and this is because the position of the hose here was very difficult to estimate and I don't want to make any failures here and so I have drilled all the holes which I wouldn't be able to reach later when the frame like it is now is um, assembled. This part of the frame I can still reach and drill in holes later and so I will make the panels first and then lay it on here and mark the positions of the hose and drill them. And if you want to build your own frame like this, then you should think about becoming a member of my website. You will find, as always, everything you need to build this frame in the download section of the website, like the SketchUp file for the frame with all the positions of the hose marked here and all the STL files, you need to cut out all these angled pieces here, all these temporary dividers. But now I think you want to know how these panels are connected to the computer and this will be the topic of my next video. And if you don't want to miss this, then you should subscribe to my channel to stay informed about any upcoming new video from me. And so I hope we'll see us soon back on the flight deck.